We're really excited to hear from our artist, Cynthia Marcoux, in her stunning exhibition, Beaded Memories. Before we start, I'd just like to thank our generous sponsors, our wonderful board of directors, our incredible staff, and our 108 member artists. Cynthia Marcoux is an Oklahoma artist who <coughs> has resided in Tulsa most of her life. She graduated from Oklahoma State University with a BA in art and worked at the Tulsa Zoo as an artist and photographer for 28 years. She currently uh, works as a free hand, freelance art handler for local galleries and museums, including 108. And tonight, we're going to explore the exhibition with Cynthia in a Q&A style. Uh, with, and we'll take anybody's questions also at the end. Um, let's welcome Cynthia with a round of applause. <laughs> and so let's start all the way from the beginning and tell us you know, how you got introduced to art. I, I guess just the way everybody else did when I was a little kid playing with crayons. I mean, I, I guess I kept doing it a lot longer than most people and became the artist in my family. And my sister was a writer and I would illustrate her books. Um, that's kind of... Okay, so you started with drawing. Started with drawing. Okay, that kind of led into my next question was what, what other mediums <laughs> could you kind of explore on your way to what we see here? Um, I started out uh, drawing with just pencil drawing. And then when I went to college, I took a photography class and I got into photography so that I could take pictures to draw from. And then I decided I liked the photography so much, I stuck with photography for a long time. And I got into black and white um, infrared photography. And I did that for many years. And then I changed back to drawing. And then when I was at the zoo, they sent me to a colored pencil class, and I learned colored pencil drawing and decided that was where I wanted to stay. So that's pretty much what I've been doing ever since then, but I kind of go off every now and then into mixed media type stuff, like, like this. Yeah. Yeah, and so this is <clears throat> the specific uh, huichol, is that what huichol. Is that? huichol uh, technique. How did you get introduced to that? Okay, I, I really have always liked beading, and I always wanted to learn how to bead, but I knew that I would never be very good at the sewing part of it, which seemed very hard to me. So I was trying to find a different way to do it, and I did some research and found out about this Huichol method that in the Indians in, I think, New Mexico started. And it was sort of a prayer type thing for them, I think. They would do bowls, and they would cover the insides with beeswax, and then set all the beads in the wax. So I started doing that, and it, it worked well for a lot of this stuff, but some of it I had to just use regular archival glue, just like paper glue is what I use, and then I put a clear coat over it to keep the beads from falling off. So what are some of your um, inspirations? Obviously, you're kind of storytelling. Um, and how do you find and source the objects that you bead? I would say all my inspiration is my childhood, because that's what most of my drawings have had to do with. And that's what all these had to do with. I just, I had a great childhood. and. I've always enjoyed everything that had to do with it. And I started collecting things uh, years and years ago. And I would collect things like, say, that peanut butter jar. And 
you know, I loved it because it's really old from when I was a kid, and I remembered it from when I was a kid, but, you know, what do you do with an old peanut butter jar? <laughs> it's not like you can really display it. So I was trying to think of something I could do to make it attractive enough to display and start decided to beat them. I had seen, really my inspiration was about 30 years ago in an art magazine, I saw this show that this woman named Liza Lou had done, which I'm sure a lot of people have heard of before. She beaded an entire kitchen. And I was just blown away by that. I thought it was the most wonderful thing I'd ever seen. And I, at the time, I wanted to do it too, but I thought, well, I can't really do that because she already did it. So I waited all this time and I think people have forgotten about it enough so that I can <laughs> take it over now. Wonderful. So how long do uh, some of these take? Well, I actually did write down some of the hours because people <laughs> ask me that all the time. Okay, the, the coffee pot over there took 46 hours. Just the pot. The flour sack over there with the baking supplies took 85 hours. Oh my. One of the Coke bottles took 10 and a half hours, and the box for the Mr. Potato Head took 73 hours. Wow. So you, you kind of find this to be like your, your therapy and your... <laughs> it is. It, it really is, in a Meditative. way, relaxing, because I do it at night when I watch TV, because you know, there's nothing else to do while you're watching TV, and I just hate to waste all that time. So I'll just sit there and, and do the little beads. Yeah. And so I do about three hours. Yes? Would you consider a 55 Peter? <laughs> you know, I have thought about going big, but that's big. Yeah. Oh, I'm trying to Um, I put it on with, it's, it's fairly thick glue, I mean it's kind of like Elmer's glue, it's fairly thick and I put it on with a, a little paint brush and I just put on like maybe a square inch at a time, so. Over sections. Yeah. Well, I have this little tool, it's a little, like a little wooden stick and it has sort of a needle looking thing coming out of the end and you lick it and then you touch the bead with it and it kind of picks it up like that and then you put it in. I, I started the very first one, the very first one was the skating, the roller skating one, and I had bought the case with the roller skates in it at an estate sale or something and I just thought it was so cute because I'd never seen a case like that and I really wanted to do something with it, and I couldn't think of anything to do. So I decided that would be my first beading project, and so I had to go on the internet and find a whole bunch of those stickers, those old skating stickers, and print those out and put them on it. And, and that, that whole thing took me like a year, that whole project. <laughs> but then after I did it, I thought that maybe I would start doing some more and then I decided to go for a whole show, and I wasn't going to show any of it until I was finished with it, but I have over the years, because people keep talking me into it. <laughs> but, um, I don't know, I, that's just where I went. You got the KFC bucket on eBay. Oh, I got a lot of this stuff on eBay. <laughs> yeah. I would say the majority on eBay or at the flea market. Yeah. And most of these is from one piece that I had or found that I just went from that to the rest of it. Like, mm -hmm. I found just the Barbie lunchbox and I wanted to do that, but then I had to go out and find a thermos and a cup to go with it. 
And then when I decided to do the cake thing, I wanted to do that because I had an old mixer, and then I had to go out and find all the stuff to go with it. And I really wanted to be the cake, <laughs> but it was just getting too crowded. <laughs> A lot of the things that I, I didn't have, I had to make, like the fried chicken I made out of two-part epoxy, and like the, the peanut butter and jelly sandwich, I found these foam pieces of bread, and I was able to use those, and then I used some kind of epoxy on the top of it to make the jelly and the peanut butter. I'm mostly scouring the internet <laughs> for beads. And I just go to any place where I can find the colors that I need and the sizes that I need. Sometimes they're really unusual. And I have had a lot of times where I was working on something and ran out of the color I was using and totally forgot what it was. So I had to go find another color and then like order it three times before I got the right one. So I'm getting better at that. And I can kind of tell you about how I Okay, this piece I did because I found this costume at a flea market and it was exactly like the ones that we used to get when we were kids and we were so excited to get those at Halloween even though they were really dorky. <laughs> so I got that and then I found the advertisement to go with it and then this I actually did used to carry around with me on Halloween back before they'd invented flashlights. <laughs> um, and then this piece over there I was wanting, I was kind of wanting to do a photograph and see how it would turn out and then I found that clock somewhere and it just, it was just serendipity. <laughs> it just worked. The Mr. Potato Head, I guess it says it on the little thing, but I had, I had made him and I, I was going to put him in just a, a little acrylic box that I had and then I read the thing about it was the first uh, TV commercial for kids was Mr. Potato Head. And I figured I had to put him in a TV. Yeah. <laughs> and that was hard to find oh, and then I, I had to like deconstruct it and cut it in half and take the back out and I still have the innards sitting out on my driveway. We don't know what to do with them. Yeah, and how you kind of create these little, you know, vignettes and even thinking about the tablecloth with that one and the little spider thing with that one is kind of creative. And that, that really is why I did all this because I enjoyed it so much and I, I really hoped that other people would see it and have the same memories that I did about it. And it, it seems to be that they are, because yeah. everybody seems to like him. So. Yeah. Everybody's been really enjoying it. And I love hearing everybody's stories about them too, that have other stories about, oh, I had that. And <laughs> well, let's give a round of applause for Cynthia. <laughs>